Hi, this is Deetra Kelsey, host of Sister Talk Televised Live Saturdays at 2 p.m. on MNN1. On Sister Talk, we feature beautiful, intelligent sisters and brothers too from the world of entertainment, politics, music, health and wellness, and so much more. Watch Sister Talk Televised Live Saturdays at 2 p.m. on MNN1. Sister Talk, we're more than just talk. Something on your mind anytime. I'm here to listen. Sister Talk. When you need someone who understands, I know what you're missing. Sister Talk. No matter what you're going through, don't worry, I ain't going nowhere. Sister Talk. If you ever feel alone, say the word, I'll be right there. Sister Talk. Sister. 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 I just want to ask you one thing, Reggie. What is a sex educator? What is that? So is it is a therapist? Because that's what I initially thought. A sexuality uh, health educator means that um, I deal with your emotional, biological, physiological, social, and cultural sexual health. Mm. So we, you know, sexuality is a very, very broad umbrella, and usually we we often think of the physical act. Mm -hmm. as opposed to the social, cultural, physiological, biological uh, components of mm -hmm. our sexuality. Okay. And so I help people understand those dynamics under the umbrella of, of oh. their sexuality. What's an example of a cultural component? So how black men deal with their masculinity is is a cultural component of sexuality and okay. you know this this identity of hyper masculinity versus mm -hmm. masculinity versus homosexuality okay. versus the mm -hmm. the uh, metrosexual versus so all of these you know these these boxes mm -hmm. that you know society const constantly tries to put as well you know he does his nails so something must be wrong right, with he, right. you know he's wearing that pink stuff because you know how pink makes a man gay. Uh, <laughs> you know, so these type of um, faux constructs mm -hmm. right. that we tend to live under. And so, mm -hmm. and as an educator, mm -hmm. I try to pull you from away from those constructs and let you know that we're just all human and that our sexuality is a birthright to both men and women all alike. That's beautiful. You know what's a perfect example of that is Prince. When he first came on the scene, we didn't know what he was. Because he's as queer as can be, isn't he? Yeah, Just he was. Not not choosing to identify with those. This this very, you know, masculine mm -hmm. uh, man of many women, beautiful women of sorts, who can wear his heels and his mm -hmm. his behind out and his chaps. Right. And, and the brothers are like, go, guy, go. And the women are like, yes, honey, yes. And, <laughs> and it's like, well, you know, but no other man would say, you know, I'm going to wear this attire to attract a woman. <laughs> and yet, he, he literally just blurred those lines and just said, you know, I am who I am. He that takes a lot of courage. That it. takes it a lot of courage. It does. Except Dennis Rodman, he was um, something like that, you know. Eh, yeah. Dennis Rodman's in a completely different universe almost. And, and that's the advantage to <laughs> being identified as queer. It means that, you know, that you just don't have to fit under these constructs to be who you are. Right. And that even in our sexuality, that it's a spectrum and it's a journey and it can change in throughout our lives. It's right. different when we're children mm -hmm. and it's different when we're teens mm -hmm. and it's different when we're young adults mm -hmm. and it's different when we're grown, grown. Mm -hmm. it, and through all of this, there's this huge journey, and he just kept going through a number of different journeys. Before you became a sex educator, you were a spoken word artist. And you still are. Still am. Still yes. Are. So yes. you have graced the stage with some of the most popular stars out there. Tell us about that. I've I've been very fortunate mm -hmm. to work with HBO's Deaf Poetry Jam. Wow. So mm -hmm. uh, just that family collective mm -hmm. uh, from Georgia Me to mm -hmm. uh, uh, Vanessa Hittery mm -hmm. to Sonia Sanchez. You also to, um, 
Deaf Poetry Jam. Also yes, I was on season three of Deaf Poetry Jam. I was also an associate producer of the contest in Detroit even before it was picked up by wow, HBO. Really? So, associate producer. And, huh? Yes, so Bruce George and Danny Simmons mm -hmm. and Deborah Pointer, mm -hmm. um, all, you know, who helped make okay. Deaf Poetry Jam just possible. So, and so it's, it's been an amazing opportunity. So you shared the stage with uh, Jill Scott? Jill Scott opened that night. I mean, just so many different people mm -hmm. that have have graced that stage mm -hmm. and you know discuss the the vital importance of literacy mm -hmm. and our words and the power that our words have mm -hmm. and Jessica Care Moore mm -hmm. and and just so many others and it's been absolutely amazing. Okay, you have another poem for us? I think I do. And what's the name of that? Uh, this is the piece that I did for a Deaf Poetry Jam. Oh, okay. It's called Fucking and Conscious. Again, I gotta step away before I get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> this piece is titled, Fuck It Ain't Conscious. I apologize, cause I'm not here to start a revolution. And I'm not here to start the next million piss people march. Mm. See, you won't see images of slaves or African-American martyrs when I speak, so maybe, just maybe, you might be telling yourself that this girl ain't nothing but a freak, because I'm not talking about nothing but fucking, flat out. And we all know there ain't nothing conscious about fucking, but I never said that I was here for your conscious awakening. And the only thing I'm trying to awake were your masculine and feminine wild. See, I was just trying to get you in bed with somebody you cared about. You know, the type of person that makes your top lip quiver and your bottom lip cringe. And if I could, I would tell you to put love in your hands and tell you to taste it. But all you seem to taste is anger and bitterness. And aren't you ready to taste something else? Smell something else? Feel something else? But fucking ain't conscious, right? Let's examine it. Don't win battles. It don't end racial profile. And it's not Democratic or Republican. It won't give you 40 anchors in a mule. And it doesn't give you equality like you think your picket signs and boycotting does. And the only thing it does, the only thing it does is feel real good. So ask yourself. When was the last time you were around panties so wet you could use it as a face cloth, wipe yourself down, and smell the occasion? Ooh. When was the last time you confused your hands with theirs, and even though you knew for sure it was just you two, somehow there seemed to be eight hands working magic and miracles occurred, but all I heard you yell the other day was some shit like, fight the power. What about love your woman or love your man? See, that's the battle I'm trying to win. So when it means wearing a silk robe with the matching thumb panties, if it means kissing until Billie Holiday is reincarnated through your spirits, if it means hugging till you catch on fire, sex until the police come knocking, if it means creamy, creamy thighs with tears in your eyes and skin under your nails to get a smile on your face and your heart in the right place, well then, let's fuck. Make love come together, whatever it is you need to call it, let's use whipped cream on everything but food. If when it means licking until you no longer recognize the taste of food but skin, if it means touching and hugging so much till you catch on fire, sex until the police come knocking, if it means creamy, creamy thighs with tears in your eyes and skin under your nails, then let's fuck. But like I've said before, fucking just ain't conscious. Okay, all right, all right. Thank you. So you flipping the script on sex. We I think try. so, you try. We you, try. You're trying to make it more positive. It's okay to use those words or whatever you want to call them. I am a sex positive advocate. Mm -hmm. And okay. I think that we should all be sex positive. I mean, it is how we got here. It is right. how the world keeps making itself. Mm -hmm. It is how we connect. It is how our spirits exchange with one another. Right. And yet, you know, as, as a culture and a society, we've been so negative about how wonderful this behavior and this act and this connection is. You know, your poems are very good. I, I was sitting here looking at Tuari, uh, returning alumni, Tuari Randall. We were just like, wow, you know, <laughs> going back and forth. But um, what are the inspirations for this poem, your poems, period? Are, but are they all about 
sex absolutely okay. absolutely um, and and there are these roller coasters to love and intimacy so mm -hmm. it's, it's not always our highs but um, just the channel of love and intimacy that we all face mm -hmm. every day uh, I think that this particular piece motivated me because everyone you know as we go through these roller coasters through the history of poetry, everyone's like, you know, we got to be pro-black and we got mm -hmm. to, you know, we got to be right on with it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, what about the sex? What about the love? Like, what's, what's, what about these stories mm -hmm. and these poems and these verses mm -hmm. that make us connect? Mm -hmm. Just like, you know, mm -hmm. being pro-black and proactive make us connect. And so. Remember, yes. wow. <laughs> Remember, 212-757-1393 if you need to call in and ask Frenchie Davis a question about her poetry, spoken words, of sex. Yes. Hey. Yes. So you're having, you do workshops, you're having something else coming up? Pretty soon. Oh, yes. Uh, so much that's going on. And thank you for having me on Sister Talk. Oh, well, this thank you for coming. Thank absolutely you. Absolutely a wonderful opportunity. Okay. Uh, so I am hosting a speed dating event. Oh, okay. Speed, uh, that's fun. Yeah. Okay. Explain Match that game to us set. So, so we're going to be hosting. We have some, some amazing bachelors and bachelorettes. And as much as sometimes people can complain, I can't find this right person, we have to be proactive. Right, okay. We have to be Even proactive. Even women also, right? Everyone has to be proactive. See, I'm from that, that, that era where, you know, the women, you know, you have to catch me. <laughs> you know, you have to. But that's, it and, seems to be changing. And even in that in process, place. though, right. there's, there's a connectivity that they have to have in order to c catch you. Okay. So it still works in, in, in that space. Okay. There are all different spaces that we can connect and chase and, and enjoy. So when that. is the speed dating? So the speed dating is February the 26th. Mm. And then on March 4th in Washington, D.C., I have this amazing town hall meeting. Mm -hmm. That's where you're from. That's where she lives in Washington, D.C. Correct. Now, right? And uh, so it's at Gym Lounge. And the town hall meeting is about the status and the state of healthy relationships and why women are deciding to marry themselves. Oh, really? So, yes. We're going to talk about it. Why, we're, why are we're, women we're, deciding that? You know, yeah. it's a scary notion mm -hmm. that, that this is a trend, that mm -hmm. we want to isolate ourselves from our partners when I think the premise of what she really wanted was to be with someone. Mm -hmm. And by creating a ceremony where she says she's celebrating herself, but you're forgetting that your initial purpose was to partner with someone. Okay. So, but we're going to talk about so the state So you're reading of, this and you're having other people Yes, we have some about sex experts and some experts and we have and great all panels. There are going to be some gift bags. We don't know exactly what's in them, you know, I but we will see. Something. I know somebody who was selling sex toys. Mm -hmm. and they did not make a lot of sales with black people. But when they went on to the other side, white people, I mean, they, they were just, women were just, just buying it up taking out their credit cards, taking out their cash. Do you find that? No, I, I definitely find that uh, as a black culture, we enjoy kink as much as anyone else in, in we pleasure keep it in the toys. Closet? You think we keep uh, it in the closet? I don't think that all people do, but mm -hmm. again, that's about us being sex positive and mm -hmm. proactive. I mean, right now, we're still afraid to say the masturbation word. <laughs> we, can't, we can't speak about these these great words and these okay. great healthy pleasures. Right. And so, you know, it, you know, for some it intimidates, but I think we've come definitely a long way okay. from some of the stigmas that we had about our sexualities. Okay. And we still have a ways to go, but I don't think as many are as intimidated as, as, as some might suggest. Let's talk about your book. Hmm. What's the name of your book? Uh, it's titled Not From Between My Thighs. Uh -huh. uh, this is my collection of erotica poems oh, uh, okay. that I wrote uh, many, many, many moons <clears throat> ago. Not From Between My Thighs. Not From Between My Thighs. I, I think I really wanted people to understand that, you know, our biggest sexual organ, of course, is our mind. Mm. It has nothing to do with what's between my legs. I mean, well, a little something. something. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's, it's, it's from my mind, and, and again, from a sex-positive space, I want people to understand that, that that's the true rites of passage to um, yeah. our sexuality, absolutely. Okay. And so so what, what's one of the things that your clients come to you with, like if there was a single most issue that they need your help working through, what would it be? Um, 
I deal with so many different diverse uh, audiences, but uh, just being comfortable in their sexuality, the, the and, intersection between sexuality and respectability, mm. and, and, you know, how do I be this, how, how can I be this sexual being and still maintain the level of respect uh, that I want in this culture and society. We're going to talk about that, the celebration of sex. Carl, you watch the Sister Talk TV show. What's your name? Where are you calling from? And what do you have to say? Hello, Carla? Hello? Uh, my name is Craig, and I'm calling from... My name is Craig, and I'm calling from Manhattan. Hi, Craig. Craig. Thanks for calling. And I wanted to... Hi, Craig. I wanted to know... Um, Frenzy said that it's, um, that you can, you know, it's good to, to play with yourself. And Absolutely. I don't understand when she say it's good to play with yourself because that's not natural. You're talking about masturbation? Yeah, that's masturbation. That, that's not natural because um, now I, I, yeah, because that, that's a problem with, with, with masturbating because it's not natural. Um, I went through that, you know what I'm saying? So now I'm, I'm two months in without masturbation, you know what I'm saying? So why are you saying that it, it's good to do that? I, it's a problem with that, with me. So... And, and why is it not natural? Where did that premise come from? Yeah, well, why, yeah, you say yes. Yes, it is. As a matter of fact, there are actual biological and health benefits to masturbation, particularly for men, because one, you you have to exercise your prostate and you're cleaning out, cleansing out your prostate, and that minimizes your chances for prostate cancer. Oh wow! So, I didn't know that. But you know, before yeah. you start Rick seeing that it's that. not natural, and Rick. you're preventing yourself from yeah, and you're decreasing your chances that. of prostate Wet cancer. Dreams will do that. Wet dreams will do that. What? Who? Wet dreams. How? Wet dreams. Wet dreams. It comes down natural. Well, it if you don't have natural. wet no, dreams. That's, you know, wet dreams are not, uh, do not give you a, a complete ejaculation. That's, that's, that's not so. And not every person that has wet dreams is, uh, ejaculates. So that's, that's not so either. Well, it works for me. Well, and and that's that's good that it works for you. But what your statement was is that it's not natural. Right. And I am discussing the health benefits to masturbation for men specifically, just so that you know. And I I want you to be as advised as as I can possibly advise you. And you can even speak to your physician about this, um, so that you can have this discussion. Now, if masturbation impedes your daily routine and your daily schedule, that is another story, but masturbation by all means is completely natural and healthy for you. And you okay. never you never answered her question. She asked you why do you think it's unnatural and I'm actually really curious about that. Because I, well, when I, when I myself, I, I feel kind of I don't feel right about myself if, if when I when I do it. I mean, I already know that I'm getting pleasure doing it, but it, it but that the way I'm doing it doesn't seem human like. You know what I mean? It doesn't seem right. Okay, thank you. She's going to answer that question, and we have another poem, a spoken word poem to say. But go ahead and answer that. Um, well, I would say we sometimes don't feel natural when we've been impeded by social and religious. Uh, stigmas that mm -hmm. suggest to us that these these are not positive things mm -hmm. right. and again that a lot of times religion undermines the health benefits to our sex and to our sexuality and to our sexual behaviors okay and in that you know in in the right place in 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 privacy mm -hmm. not interrupt anyone self-love self-love is always a positive thing okay. and I want our our call is to know self-love so, is positive. So hey, let's get up there and say one more poem. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll read something from mm -hmm. from here. Um, yeah. You have a very short time. Yeah. We ran I, out. We always run out of time. It's so, true. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, hmm. To the point. Okay. Let's get to the point. <laughs> If I could just be honest with you, I want you to kiss me like there's a million dollars in my throat. And if I were to be frank, I want you to hold me like you were a slave and I was freedom in the palm of your hand. I just want you to yacht on your own private island and I'm your only mate and hey, we can play chess. 
and you can checkmate the hell out of me over and over and over and over and over again. My arms are up, my legs are too, I surrender. If only I can make you understand there are no obligations, only fulfillments is all about yours and mine's excitement. If I could get you to come like thick black panthers on their prey, so slow, so smooth, it just kind of sneaks up on you and then explodes like some big ass volcano in Hawaii. Now, we don't have to have a name for it. Just watch out for that lava, put a cap on it. You know what I'm saying, rubber, condom, plastic, prophylactic, and have a spare just in case you erupt again. If I could just feel your skin all across my fingers without thinking about who you are at this time because I don't give a damn about your interests and I don't care about your middle name. All that's in the subconscious of my membrane. But if I could shout it loud enough or whisper it softly enough, if I could spell it correctly or incorrectly, because all I want you to know and all I want you to understand, if you can understand, I just want to fuck. <laughs> and that's how we're going to end it. All right. <laughs>